Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 40 on measure and integration. Uh, in the past two lectures, we had been looking at the various modes of convergence for measurable functions. We will continue this study in today's lecture also. We will recall some of the properties of convergence in measure that we had proved last time and then we will go on to what is called convergence in the pth mean. So, let us just recall what we have been doing f and f n are measurable functions on a measure space, then we said that f n converges to f in measure if for every epsilon bigger than 0, the measure of the set all x where f n x minus f x is bigger than or equal to epsilon, that measure of that set goes to 0 as n goes to infinity for every epsilon. So, in some sense uh, the measure of the set where f n is away from f by a distance epsilon that goes to 0 for every epsilon bigger than 0. So, this was called convergence in measure and uh, we denoted this by saying that f n with a arrow and the symbol uh, m above it f. So, f n converges to f in measure. So, it is denoted by this symbol. Uh, in the previous lecture, we showed that the convergence in measure it neither implies nor is implied by convergence point almost everywhere. That means, uh, if f n converges to f in measure, then it need not imply that f n converges point wise or almost everywhere. And conversely, if a sequence converges point wise or almost everywhere, that need not imply that it converges in measure. Uh, however, we proved that if the underlying measure space is finite and f n converges to f almost everywhere, then it also converges in measure. So, that means, convergence in measure is implied by convergence almost everywhere, if the underlying measure space is finite. And um, after that, we looked at what is called almost uniform convergence for functions. So, we said a sequence f n converges almost uniformly to f on a set E, if we can find for every epsilon a subset E epsilon such that the measure of the set E intersection E epsilon complement is finite and f n converges uniformly to f on E. That means, except for a small set of small measure f n converges to f uniformly. So, this is called almost uniform uh, convergence. Note this is uh, different from saying that the convergence is almost convergence is uniform almost everywhere. Saying that f n converges to f uniformly almost everywhere will mean that uh, except for an L set f n converges to f and almost uniform convergence is saying that outside a set of measure 0 for every epsilon there is a set E epsilon of such that outside that set the convergence is uh, uniform. In general, uh, we uh, showed that convergence in measure uh, does not imply convergence almost everywhere, because uh, if convergence almost everywhere almost uniform implies convergence uh, almost everywhere. So, we want to conclude that convergence in measure does not imply convergence almost uniform, because almost uniform convergence implies almost everywhere convergence. So, if convergence in measure implies almost uniform convergence, then it will also imply a convergence almost everywhere, which is not true in general. So, convergence in measure does not uh, imply convergence um, almost uh, uniform. However, if f n converges almost uniformly uh, to f, then it also converges in measure. So, the converse is always true, namely if f n converges almost uniformly to f, then f n converges to f in measure. So, that um, the proof of this is quite simple. So, because f n uh, converges to f almost uniformly, so that means for every delta bigger than 0, we can select a set E delta such that 
outside uh, the measure of the set outside e delta is small f n converges uniformly to f on e delta. So, that is by the property that f n converges almost uniformly to f. So, for every delta we can find a subset. So, so, let us say we are analyzing this on the set E, then measure of the set outside E delta is small and f n converges uniformly to E delta. But what does that mean? That means, because it is converging uniformly to f on E delta, so that means for every uh, n uh, integer n bigger than 0, f n must come close to f for every x uh, in E delta. So, that means, for every epsilon bigger than 0, if you look at uh, there exists a set n, there is, this is a natural number n, say that the distance f n minus f x is less than epsilon for all n bigger than n and for every x uh, uh, belonging to E delta complement. But then that means, if we look at the set of points where this is bigger than or equal to epsilon, that will be contained in uh, uh, E delta and the measure of uh, E delta is less than epsilon. So, that will prove that for every delta, we have got a stage n bigger than n naught, say that uh, x, say that f n x minus f x bigger than an epsilon is less than delta. That means, f n converges to f in measure. So, we have shown that um, almost uniform convergence implies convergence in measure. So, these are the basic properties of uh, converg relations between convergence in measure with almost uniform convergence, convergence point wise and uh, so on. Now, we just now said that uh, convergence in measure need not imply convergence almost everywhere in general. However, one can prove a, a, a partial result in this direction, namely if f n converges to f in measure, then there is a subsequence uh, which converges almost everywhere. And this result is uh, quite useful sometimes uh, when um, you are analyzing sequences of measurable functions which converge in measure. So, this theorem is called uh, Ries theorem. So, let us uh, prove Ries theorem. So, it says let f n be a sequence of measurable functions converging in measure to a measurable uh, function f. Then there exists a subsequence f n k uh, such that f n k converges to f uh, everywhere or almost uh, to almost everywhere actually we should be saying to f n almost. So, every sequence which converges in measure has a subsequence which converges almost everywhere. So, let us see a uh, proof of this. So, to prove this we have what I was looking at we are looking at how to construct a subsequence f n k which converges almost everywhere to f. So, uh, that means we have to find f n k such that. So, we reformulate the problem as follows that uh, look at the set of points so, f n k we want with the property that whenever f n k x minus f of x is bigger than 1 over k, the set of these points okay, for k equal to uh, union of this, such sets for k equal to j to infinity intersection over j equal to 1 into infinity that must be equal to 0. So, we want a sequence f n k such that this, prop, this measure of this set is equal to 0. Why is that uh, enough? So, let us just look at so, we are saying that f n k will converge to f almost everywhere if the following if the if we look at the set uh, intersection j equal to 1 to infinity union over k equal to j to infinity the set of points x belonging to x say that mod of f n k x minus f of x bigger than 1 over k, this set has got measure 0. Why is that? Because if we take an element x belonging to this, what will that imply? So, that is if and only if x belongs to this is belonging to intersection. So, x belongs to union k over j to infinity x belonging to x say that f n k x minus f of x is bigger than or equal to 1 over k for every j. So, that must happen for every j, right, because it belongs to intersection. 
but what does that mean that is if and only if, if this belongs to j that means for every j there exists uh, k equal to j k equal to j to infinity so that means for every j there exists k bigger than uh, or equal to j such that saying that x belongs to this union means x will belong to at least one of them that means x belongs to uh, for this set for some k bigger than or equal to j. So, there is a uh, k say that bigger than or equal to j such that x belongs to this such that that means f n k x minus f of x is bigger than or equal to k for such an x this must hold okay, is bigger than or equal to k. So, that means it does not converge. So, if we show that this set has got measure 0, that means if x does not belong, then it must converge. So, what is the meaning of saying? So, if we want to say that x does not, if, if x does not belong to this set, that will mean what? It does not belong to the intersection, that means it does not, uh, that means there exists. Uh, so, x belongs to this, uh, inter, does not belong to intersection, that means at least it does not belong to one of them. So, there exists some j naught such that x does not belong to this. Okay? And if x does not belong to this for j some j naught, it does not belong to union. So, there exists. So, that means there exists a j naught such that from j naught onwards x does not belong to this. That means, x cannot belong to any one of them. That means, for every k bigger than or equal to j. So, there is a j naught such that for every k bigger than or equal to j bigger than or equal to does not hold equal to j that means, this must happen for less than 1 over k. So, saying x does not belong to this set will mean there is a say, there is a j naught say so that for every k bigger than or equal to j naught the distance is less than k that will imply that f n k x converges to f of x. So, what we have done, what we are saying is essentially that the so, this is the set of points uh, where which will where f and k does not converge to f and we want that set to have measure 0. So, once again let me revise saying that f and k does not converge to f x is same as saying x does not belong to this set. So, because if x does not belong, so for every is does not belong to intersection over j of some sets that means, uh, there, is, uh, there is a set, uh, there is a j naught say so that x does not belong to j naught. So, it belongs to this for uh, uh, some, it should be union of uh, k. So, that is a union here. So, that means, uh, for every k bigger than j naught, this is less than k. So, we have to uh, only find a subsequence. So, we have to complete, to complete the proof, we have to uh, construct a subsequence. So, that measure of this set is equal to 0. So, let us write uh, this set as A. So, A is the set of points where intersection over j equal to 1 to infinity union over k equal to j to infinity of where f n k x minus f x is bigger than or equal to 1 over k. And let the inner portion which is a union let us call that set as A j. So, what we want to prove is that mu of intersection A j uh, is equal to mu of. So, we want to uh, prove that mu of a is 0, but this set a is contained in a j because this is a intersection, the intersection is smaller. So, a is subset of a j. So, showing that the mu of the set a is 0, a is contained in a j that means mu of a is less than or equal to mu of a j. So, we will be through if we can prove that mu of a j's converge to 0 as j goes to infinity. So, we have to construct a subsequence f and k with this property that mu of a j's of these sets must go to 0 as j goes to infinity. So, this will be true. So, we want mu subsequence that mu of a j's go to uh, 0. So, that will be true uh, if we could uh, find uh, say for example, a sequence f n k says that the measure of the set where f n k minus f x is bigger than or equal to k say it is less than 1 over 2 to the power k plus 1. Suppose, we can choose our subsequence in that way then what will happen? Then mu of a j which is nothing but uh, union of uh, 
from k equal to j to infinity of so these sets. So, that is by countable sub additive property mu of a j will be less than or equal to summation k equal to j to infinity mu of these sets and each uh, mu of this set is less than 1 over 2 to the power k plus 1. So, that is summation uh, j equal to infinity. So, that will be this is a geometric series with common ratio less than half. So, that will give you 1 over 2 to the power j. So, we will get mu of a j less than 1 over 2 over to the power j. So, as j goes to infinity, we will get mu of a j equal to 0 and hence uh, we will be true. So, we have to only find uh, a subsequence f n k with this property and that is done by uh, using the fact that f n converges to f in measure. So, because it converges in measure, so by the property uh, of convergence in measure, let us start with epsilon equal to 1, then convergence in measure says that mu of the set of those points where f n minus f x is bigger than 1 will be less than say half for every that goes to 0. So, that means, uh, after some stage the difference of the measure. So, measure of the set where f n minus f x is bigger than or equal to 1 will be small after some stage. So, let us that stage be called as n 1. So, using uh, the fact the convergence in measure, we can choose n 1 such that measure of the set where f n 1 minus f x bigger than 1 is less than half. Now, we proceed inductively, supposing we have selected n 1 less than n 2 up to n k minus 1 have been selected uh, with those uh, required property. Then, by con fact that the sequence f n is converging in measure for epsilon equal to 1 over 2 to the power k plus 1, select n k a stage bigger than n k minus 1 such that the measure of the cos set uh, f n k minus f x bigger than 1 over k is less than 1 over 2 to the power k plus 1. So, by induction uh, this uh, existence is uh, existence of the sequence f n k with this property is complete and hence uh, we will have that this subsequence converges almost everywhere to f. So, this is uh, 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 a important result uh, which is used sometimes to analyze uh, sequences which converge in measure. So, this is called Ries theorem. So, uh, we have looked at uh, the various properties of. Uh, so, till now we looked at various uh, properties of convergence, convergence uh, almost everywhere, convergence point wise, convergence almost uniform, convergence uh, uniform and convergence in measure and relations between such uh, modes of convergence. Uh, there is another uh, mode of convergence which arises when the functions f n are in L p spaces. Uh, recall we have defined uh, L p spaces the p th power integrable functions. So, one would uh, like to know uh, that when sequences converge in L p, does this convergence have any relation with convergence in measure point wise convergence or convergence almost uniformly. So, we will anal analyze these things next. So, let us recall what is the meaning of saying that have a sequence converges in the p th mean or L p. So, saying that a sequence f n where p is bigger than 1 less than infinity and uh, f belongs to L p. So, let us take functions f n and f in L p. So, saying that f n converges to f in L p or sometimes one also writes this as f n converges in the p th mean to f if the p th norm of f n minus f goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, this is called convergence in the p th mean. So, we would like to find out the relations between the p th means and other modes of convergence. So, the first property is that in general convergence in the p th mean does not imply uniform convergence it uh, and it need not imply almost uniform convergence or convergence almost everywhere. So, convergence in p th mean need not imply any one of uniform convergence, almost uniform convergence or convergence almost everywhere. So, to uh, give an example of uh, measure space and a sequence of functions in L p say that f n converges to f in L p, but f n does not converge in um, uniformly or almost uniformly or almost everywhere. So, we will give a uh, example of a sequence 
uh, which does not uh, which converges in LP, but con does not converge almost everywhere. So, that example itself will imply that P th mean cannot imply uniform convergence, because uniform implies convergence almost everywhere. And similarly, same example will uh, be uh, sufficient to say that P th mean does not imply almost uniform convergence, because uniform convergence implies almost uniform convergence. So, we want to construct a sequence of uh, functions in L p such that the sequence converges in L p, but does not converge almost everywhere. So, for that let us look at the measure space um, uh, the interval 0 1 Lebesgue measurable sets in 0 1 and lambda the length function. And let us write if you recall uh, we had constructed uh, a sequence of uh, measurable functions uh, on this measure space uh, by looking at uh, uh, dividing the interval into equal parts uh, by using the binary points. And that example showed that that was the example which showed that uh, convergence um, in measure okay, does not uh, imply convergence almost everywhere. So, that is the sequence we are looking at again. So, let us recall that sequence. So, f n for every n bigger than or equal to 1, let n be represented as k plus 2 to the power m, we, where this uh, k is between uh, 1 and 2 to the power m and m is. So, this uh, we showed that for, ev um, this for every n can be written uniquely in the form k plus 2 to the power m, where m is a positive integer and k is between 1 and between uh, 1 and 2 to the power uh, m. Okay. So, for uh, whenever m n is represented this way, we define f n to be the indicator function of the interval k by 2 to the power m and k plus 1 to k plus 1 by 2 to the power m. So, look at the kth interval of uh, length 1 over 2 to the power m and uh, define the f n to be the indicator function of uh, this interval. So, uh, so we showed uh, earlier that this uh, sequence of uh, measurable functions does not converge almost everywhere and this converges in measure to the function identically equal to uh, 0. So, this sequence of measurable functions converges in measure to f identically 0, but it does not converge to f at any point uh, in 0 1. So, this does not converge almost everywhere or at any point actually. And let us just uh, prove uh, that this sequence of uh, measurable functions is in L p, because this is an indicator function of an interval. So, the fun function takes the value 1 on this interval and interval is finite. So, obviously, it implies this is a uh, L p integrable function. So, indicator function of a sub interval. So, f n belongs to L p. So, we have got a sequence of uh, functions in L p such that and let us look at the what is the LP norm of f n, because it is the indicator function of an interval of a length 1 over 2 to the power m. So, it is precisely equal to uh, 1 over 2 to the power m. The value function takes the value 1 on that interval of length 1 over 2 to the power m. So, its LP norm is 1 over 2 to the power m raised to power 1 over p. So, this implies that the norm of f n minus f which is identically 0 goes to 0 as m goes to and as n goes to infinity, because as n goes to infinity m also goes to infinity. So, this is a sequence of uh, functions in L p which converges to the function uh, identically 0, but the function sequence does not converge almost everywhere. So, that proves uh, our claim namely convergence in p convergence in the p th norm does not imply convergence. Uh, uniform or convergence almost uniform or convergence point wise. So, convergence in the p th mean does not imply this and so as we indicated this cannot imply uh, uniform or almost uniform because both of them imply convergence almost everywhere. Next let us look at uh, fact that convergence in the p th mean always implies convergence in uh, measure. So, this is uh, so let us take a sequence f n which converges to, to f in L p and let epsilon greater than 0 be arbitrary. So, what we have to show? So, let us just uh, look at what we have to show. So, f n converges to f in L p. So, we are given that f n converges to f 
in pth mean to show f n converges to f in measure. That means, so what does it mean? That is, for every epsilon bigger than 0, we have to look at the measure of the set x belonging to x such that f n x minus f of x bigger than or equal to epsilon limit n going to infinity they must be equal to 0. So, this is what we have to show. So, let us call E to be the set x belonging to x where f n x minus f of x is bigger than or equal to epsilon. Now, we know that f n goes to f in L p. So, f n goes to f in L p that is equivalent to saying that f n minus f norm of that p th norm goes to 0. Well, let us take the power p also. So, what will that mean is the following. So, saying that in L p. So, let us look at the norm f n minus f p. This is equal to integral mod f n minus f to the power p d uh, mu. So, that is what uh, and this goes to 0, right, but this is equal to integral over E of the same thing f n minus f to the power p d mu plus integral over E complement of the same thing. So, mod f n minus f to the power p d mu. Right? Now, on the uh, set E, on the set E, on the set E f n uh, is bigger than or equal to epsilon. Right? So, on the set E this difference is bigger than epsilon. So, this is bigger than or equal to epsilon to the power p into mu of the set E. Okay. plus integral over E complement, but this is a non negative function. So, even if I drop this term, it will still remain bigger than or equal to mu of E. So, that implies that mu of E is less than or equal to mod okay, mu of E is norm of f n minus f to P divided by epsilon per to power p. So, this is uh, the inequality that we get for this is actually an important uh, inequality in the theory of probability and this is called Chebyshev's inequality. A very simple inequality, but you see it gives a powerful outcome. So, that is following because f n converges to f n L p. So, this goes to 0. So, that means that mu of E equal to 0. So, the set where f n is bigger than f by a distance epsilon a mu of that it depends on epsilon and so that goes to 0 for every epsilon. So, that will prove that if f n uh, so that proves that if f n converges to f in the p th mean then it converges in measure. Okay. So, uh, as we looked at just now the proof is simple look at the set where f n minus f x is bigger than or equal to epsilon then the integral then the integral uh, mod of f n minus f n norm of f n minus f to the power p can be split into two parts. So, and one part where the function f n minus f is bigger than epsilon is this and remaining part we drop. So, inequality still stays. So, mu of e is less than or equal to this which goes to 0. So, that proves that convergence in the p th mean implies convergence in measure. However, in general the convergence almost everywhere does not imply convergence in the p th mean. So, for that let us look at a simple example uh, look at the Lebesgue measure space R Lebesgue measurable sets lambda. So, that is the Lebesgue measure so the Lebesgue measure space and look at the function f n which is defined as n raised to power minus 1 by p into the indicator function of the interval uh, 0 to n. So, this function first of all let us observe that uh, this uh, function belongs to L p because integral of f n uh, raised to power p is just uh, n to the n to the power uh, minus 1 to the power p. So, that is uh, 1 over n 
and the, into the measure of the uh, interval 0 and that is n. So, in all the each f n uh, is uh, a L p function, it is integral norm is equal to L p norm is 1 and this uh, converges uniformly to f that is uh, obvious, because the values of the function that is taking on a larger and larger interval is 1 over n. So, becoming smaller and smaller. So, we can always find for every x, we can find a stage such that for after which the distance will be less than 0. So, that means, f n converge. So, it is easy to check, let us just verify this is easy to verify that f n converges to f uniformly. However, we just now said that the L p norm of each f phi is 1. So, that does not converge to f in the p th norm. So, what we are saying is convergence almost everywhere does not imply convergence in the uh, p th mean. Okay. This is convergence almost everywhere. Um, here is another uh, observation that none of uniform convergence or almost uniform convergence or convergence in measure imply convergence in the p th mean. So, that means, the none of this in each one. So, that means, in general uniform convergence does not imply convergence in the p th mean or convergence almost uniform does not imply and similarly convergence in measure need not imply convergence in the p th mean. Because obviously, because, because both uniform convergence and almost uniform convergence apply convergence almost everywhere. So, if this were uh, true, okay, then we will have a contradiction. So, this is true. Uh, next, we uh, want to uh, say that convergence in the uh, measure uh, need not imply convergence in the p th mean. So, for that let us look at uh, the example of the measure space 0 1 Lebesgue measure space and let us define uh, g n of x equal to n to the power 1 over p that is something similar to the previous one instead of minus 1 over p it is n to the power 1 over p and into the indicator function of 0 to 1 over n. So, here the interval where function is non zero is shrinking, but the value is increasing. In the previous one, in the previous one, the value was decreasing, the length was increasing. So, it is the other way around of this. So, look at this uh, function g n. All of these uh, functions g n are in uh, L p, because integral mod g n will be equal to the power p will be n into indicator function. So, integral is equal to 1. So, each one of them has got uh, is in L p with integral equal to 1 and uh, it is obvious that uh, the sequence g n converges in measure. right? It converges in measure that is obvious, because um, the set where it is going to be bigger than or equal to epsilon is going to be shrinking it is 0 to 1 over n. So, that will go to 0. So, converges in measure and uh, to identically equal to 0 and it is in integrals uh, L p uh, norms are equal to 1. So, hence g n does not converge to f identically 0 in the uh, p th mean. So, that means, we have produced a sequence uh, of functions which is convergence in measure, but does not imply convergence in L p spaces. However, if the underlying measure space is finite, then the uniform convergence does imply convergence in the p th mean. So, that is uh, quite um, obvious uh, to verify. So, let us just look at look at uh, mu of a measure space. So, that mu of x is finite and let f n be a sequence of functions uh, in L p converging uniformly to a, a measurable function f. We want to show that f n converges to f in L p also, but what is uniform convergence? Uniform convergence means for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a stage say that after which so, given every epsilon bigger than 0, you can find a stage and not say that the distance between f n and f is less than epsilon for every n bigger than or equal to n 0 and for every x. So, uniform means for every x the same stage satisfies the required property. So, for every x there is a single stage and not say that f n x minus f of x is less than epsilon. So, now let us look at uh, the absolute value of uh, the function mod f to the power p. Okay. See, we have we have just given that f is uh, converging uniformly okay. and each f n is in L p, but we do not uh, know whether f is in L p or not. So, we have first have to prove that this is in L p, but look at the absolute value of um, f to the power p. 
So, by triangle inequality, I can write it as mod of f n minus f plus. So, it should, this should be also be less than or equal to by triangle inequality, right? Add and subtract um, f n to the power p. Now, absolute value of um, a plus b is always less than or equal to two times the maximum of uh, the two values. So, this is less than or equal to two times the maximum value of f n minus f and absolute value of f n. Of course, everything raised to power p, but that is same as less than or equal to 2 to the power p into the maximum of this to the power p. And now, 2 to the power p and the maximum will always be less than or equal to the sum. So, we can write this is less than or equal to 2 to the power p mod of f n minus f to the power p plus mod of f n to the power p. So, what does that imply? So, we can integrate both sides with respect to mu. So, integral will be less than or equal to 2 to the power p into f n minus f n naught minus f to the power p d mu plus 2 to the power p of f n naught. And this we just now showed is less than epsilon. So, this will be less than 2 to the power p epsilon to the power p mu of x plus 2 to the power p norm of f n to the power p. And each of them being finite, that is, says that the function f is in LP. So, given so what we have shown is if if the underlying space is having finite measure and f n's belong to f, f n's belong to LP and converge uniformly to f, then the limit function is also in LP. So that is what we have shown. And now look at the difference. So the difference of f n minus f to the uh, pth norm is by definition integral of mod f n minus f to the power p raised to power 1 over p. Okay. But for n bigger than n naught, this is difference is less than epsilon to the epsilon to the power p raised to power 1 over p. So, that is epsilon into mu x raised to power 1 over p. So, uh, as epsilon goes to 0, this will go to 0. So, that proves that f n converges to f in the p th mean. Let us also uh, analyze uh, what happens the relations between LP spaces and other modes of convergence when the underlying space is of finite measure. So, the result says uh, even if the underlying measure space is finite, then none of uniform convergence or convergence almost everywhere need imply convergence in the pth mean. So, this condition is not good enough to ensure that almost uniform convergence uh, or that will imply. And that uh, we have just now looked at uh, the function g n x is equal to n to the power 1 over p. So, these are all LP functions and uh, they with norm equal to LP norm equal to 1. Okay. So, they cannot converge in LP, but we know that this converges in measure and hence uh, almost uniform. So, also uh, the convergence in the pth mean need not imply almost uniform convergence or convergence almost everywhere. The other way around inequality that even when this is finite, the convergence in p th mean need not imply almost uniform or convergence. So, that uh, earlier example of uh, the measure space 0 on 0 1 Lebesgue measurable sets and uh, f n to be the indicator function of the interval i k m, where i k m is the interval of length to the power m. Just now, we consider this example. So, this uh, is example of uh, functions they converges to f uniformly. Okay. So, it converges to uh, f uh, in the p th f identically 0 in the p th mean, but we know that it does not converge almost everywhere and hence it cannot also converge almost uniformly, because almost uniform convergence implies convergence almost everywhere. So, these are the various ways of looking at uh, modes of convergence and analyzing them. Uh, let me uh, just uh, look at this all the implications put together in the form of a diagram. So, here is the diagram I'm going to look at this. So, here we have got the notion of uniform convergence, uniform almost everywhere in the pth mean. Here is point wise, point wise almost everywhere in measure and almost uniform. Uh, as we all uh, know that uniform convergence is the strongest one. So, uniform we have already seen earlier that uniform implies point wise and of course, point wise implies point wise almost everywhere and this other way around implications need not hold. right? Simple examples 
and uniform will imply uniform almost everywhere. Actually, uniform is uniform almost everywhere with the set to be empty set. So, uniform implies uniform almost everywhere. And uh, just now we proved when mu of x is finite. So, this green arrow indicates uh, that implication under the condition that mu of the whole space is finite. So, uniform convergence almost everywhere and underlying space finite implies convergence in the pth mean that we saw just now. And this way we already seen uniform implies point wise apply point wise almost everywhere. And we also saw that uh, point wise convergence point wise almost everywhere in general need not imply convergence in measure, but when an underlying measure space is finite point wise will imply convergence in measure. Of course, point wise almost everywhere need not imply almost uniform, but we so showed today that if the underlying space is finite measure then the point wise implies almost uniform. And obviously, almost uniform we have shown implies point wise almost everywhere. Okay. And finally, uh, we also showed today that almost uniform implies in measure and, and when the underlying space is finite in measure implies convergence in the pth mean we use Chebyshev's inequality. And just now we, we said that convergence always in the pth mean always implies convergence in measure. So, this is the overall picture of various modes of uh, convergence. So, uh, with this uh, we uh, come to the end of uh, the basic, uh, basic concepts of uh, measure theory. Whatever uh, we have not done is essentially looking at one can also look at various ways of necessary and sufficient conditions under which a sequence f n converges to f in L p. That is one thing we have not done, but uh, in the limited uh, scope of lectures, uh, we wanted to cover almost in 40 lectures the basic concepts of measure theory and that uh, we have covered. Another thing that we have not proved is uh, uh, looking at the change of variables formula uh, for R n that uh, again requires uh, a bit of work and technical things. So, we have not covered that uh, in our uh, discussions. So, um, with that we uh, come to an end of uh, uh, this uh, course uh, um, video lectures on measure theory. In the next uh, one lecture, uh, I will just try to give an overall view of the things that we have done in our course. Thank you.